How are we doing, everyone? And welcome to another episode of the Big D Podcast on the Spunky Spectrum Sports Network. I am uh, Santa Claus today, or uh, better known as Alex, and uh, I am back for uh, after a bit of a break from my weekly contribution. But uh, we're very happy to have you on a special Christmas-themed episode. We are coming right up to the big day, the day everyone's been waiting for. And we finally got NFL football on Christmas this year. So uh, I know uh, the one man excited. I think he's looking forward a little bit more towards the Thursday night football game this week. But your man, the host, the Big D himself, Dylan. How are you, sir? Uh, thank you very much, Santa. And by the way, uh, you Dolphins are going to be uh, populating the NFL landscape on uh, Christmas Day. Yeah, uh, it's probably going to be the best day of the uh, best game of the Christmas Day slate, to be honest with you. But uh, I'm excited for it. I can't wait. Oh, come on. Tyree Kill and Aaron Rodgers, what else do you want? I mean, it sounds like a present to me. <laughs> but uh, let's get right into it. Um, You know, this is a Christmas-themed episode, so of course we're going to be talking some Christmas. I have to know, Dylan, I want to know your favorite. First off, just uh, what's your favorite Christmas memory? Just just going back through the years, uh, what's something that made you nice, nice and fuzzy? A really cool present you got, a good uh, uh, experience you had. Uh, I want to hear. Oh, uh, I remember in 2010 flying from uh, south from southwest from uh, southwest Florida, Illinois, and guess what? And guess what? I saw all of the ground snow. There you go. I mean, I I know you were uh you're, you're a Florida boy just like myself, so I think uh that first white Christmas that you experience is definitely got to be uh something that's a little surreal and and something that that you'll never forget. I mean, I saw snow in my young in my younger days, but uh, you fly on Christmas and see a what and have a white Christmas. Oof. Absolutely. I mean, and honestly, I was gonna go the same the same route. I mean, my. I had uh, some family move up to uh, New Hampshire, and uh, that first year that we visited uh, during winter break, I mean, it was it was like I mean, like you said, it's it's just kind of surreal seeing um, seeing a white Christmas and, and and being somewhere. I mean, obviously being born and raised in Florida, there was no such thing as a white Christmas. I had t-shirt Christmases, hence the uh, the t-shirt Santa Claus here, but. Um, I, you know, it's it's just it's something that being born and raised in Florida, you, you can't really appreciate until you until you finally get to uh, wake up on Christmas morning and see some snow outside. All right, Alex, uh, we all know Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is the goat of Christmas song. So what is your favorite non-Mariah Carey Christmas song? My favorite non-Mariah Carey Christmas song, I think... I, oh man, there's so many good ones. Um, Jingle Bell Rock is a very, it's a classic. It's uh, definitely one that, you know, it, it just kind of gets you pumped up. It kind of gets you, uh, you know, excited and, and and really in that Christmas spirit. Also, uh, as a kid, uh, one of my favorite ever Christmas movies and, um, you know, the song that that corresponds to it. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer is uh is is a pretty tough one to beat too. Yeah, a couple a couple old faithful there, and I've got another one. How about the Frosty the Snowman snow yeah. song? Absolutely, it gets me. It almost, I mean, even today, it almost gets me the tears. Yeah, it's, I know it's it, it really. I mean, you start. I mean, honestly, these days you can go to uh, Macy's or, or or Walmart in October and start hearing the Christmas music. So uh, I think, unfortunately, um, co- commercialized Christmas has, has almost tried to take the uh, take the charm out of it. But uh, you know, thankfully, you know it's uh, it's a little bit more of a of a bigger deal to uh, I think people around the world, and uh, we won't let we won't let those big retail stores who start playing Christmas music before uh, before Thanksgiving, before Halloween, uh, take away the, the Christmas spirit. Hey, the only problem is if you go for if you go for your Christmas presents now, there aren't any left unless you get them via Amazon. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh you know it's you gotta be strategic. It's it's definitely turned into a uh, a get it get it first or don't get it at all kind of situation. So I mean Black Friday is obviously uh, played its played its role in uh, providing many 
uh, kids, parents, everyone around the world was uh, with some nice Christmas presents. So uh, you definitely got to be prepared for it. It kind of it crept up on me this year. I'm not going to lie. But uh, let's uh, let's move on. We uh, talked over Christmas memories. We talked over Christmas songs. You know, this is uh, at the end of the day, this is a sports podcast. And, uh, you know, uh, the NFL is back on Christmas this year. The NBA has always, uh, at least throughout my lifetime, been kind of the king of Christmas when it comes to the sporting events. I want to know your favorite Christmas sports memory, Dylan. Well, uh I might be showing my age with this answer, but how about 1971 Dolphins Chiefs play the longest game in NFL history? I think they're still playing that game somewhere. It went to, let me see how long, 82 minutes and 40 seconds. The Miami Dolphins ended up winning 27 to 24 in a Gary Premium field goal. But what I remember about that game is Ed Polak from the Chiefs, racked up 85 yards rushing, 110 receiving, and let me see if I can... 155 return yards. So can you do... Let me see. That would be 95, 155. I feel like 300-something all-purpose yards. That's insane. You know... uh. It's, it's a great option. It's something, obviously, I wasn't uh, necessarily quite around for, but um, it was one of my options uh, for this same category as well. I'm actually going, going to go in a very similar direction, uh, a game that I was personally also not alive for, but uh, something that, uh, you know, in the history of especially my favorite team, it, it, it's a significant occasion that happened on Christmas. I'm going to take it back to 1994, a one Mr. Don Shula, rest in peace, uh, breaks the NFL regular season victory record. Um, the Miami Dolphins were playing the Detroit Lions. Both both teams were nine and six at the time, battling for the playoffs. And one, um, one of maybe the best running backs in NFL history, Barry Sanders, came into that game 169 yards short of the 2,000-yard mark. Fortunately for my Miami Dolphins, they uh, that defense uh, limited Barry Sanders to 52 yards. The Dolphins scored on five of their first seven possessions and uh, won that game 27 to 20. Gave Don Shula his 319th regular season victory, past, passing George Hollis. And, uh, you know, obviously the legend of Don Shula is uh, etched into the history of the NFL forever. But, um, you know, it was definitely that's definitely a special one as uh, as a Miami Dolphins fan. Of course, obviously, I wasn't there uh, when it, I wasn't necessarily around when it happened. But uh, as far as uh, the history of my favorite football team and uh, obviously the greatest NFL coach to ever do it. Uh, and yes, to ever do it. Um it is uh, definitely something where uh, you get a little bit of Christmas magic. Hey, and by the way, you by the way, the Dolphins and Lions played this year. They sure did. Or they unfortunately, one of our teams beat the Lions, and it wasn't my team because we lost it, and you guys won. Yeah, you know, um, God, that game feels like so long ago, but you're right. Uh, it, it was a little bit closer to close too close to comfort in my opinion but uh fortunately um that was uh day before halloween i believe october 30, 30th i think that game was so uh you know it's it's an important one i mean it ended up a, a closer game than i think a lot of people expected it to be but um you know it's uh you never know especially the way things have been going with miami right now uh might have been an important one to uh to lock up a playoff spot. So it's always nice when we uh when we get get the job done. I mean, no NFC team is not as important as uh unfortunately it would have been to uh, knock off the Buffalo Bills this most recent week. But um obviously everyone in the NFL matters. Everyone in the NFL counts, and uh, you never know, especially early in the season when uh when a game can really be uh be a difference maker. All right, Alex. Uh, simple. It could be in. It could be life. It could be for your house. It could be for your football team. But what do you want this Christmas? Oh, uh, Dylan, this Christmas. I mean, it's really pretty simple. I want 
a Miami Dolphins victory over the Green Bay Packers. Get off this three-game losing streak. Uh, get some momentum going into December, going into the home stretch. And as a little cherry on top, I'd love a Super Bowl victory. But you know, that's that's one of those things that you put at the top of the Christmas list that uh, you know you might you, you know it, it, you kind of throw it on there, hoping your parents uh, just kind of buy it, not not know ex- exactly how expensive it is. Almost a pipe dream Christmas present. So uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll throw the Dolphins Super Bowl victory on there, but a win against Aaron Rodgers on Christmas Day sure would be nice. Yeah, you? yeah. You know what I want? A, I want everybody to be ha- healthy because uh, seemingly with everything happening nowadays, I want everybody to be healthy. I want everybody to be happy. Because I think we're all in the jolly old spirit. We're all feeling, we're all feeling spunky about ourselves. I didn't just say it because it's my nickname, but we're all feeling spunky about ourselves, and. Going full of positive spin and uh and uh you mentioned uh your dolphins have up my jacks. I hope for a healthy Trevor Williams the next dozen years. Yeah. I you know, the way he's been playing lately, that's a that's a pretty good wish. Uh because if he if he keeps up what he's doing now, you know, last season with Urban Meyer it was uh Definitely not the Trevor Lawrence I think a lot of people expected to see when he got to the NFL, especially. Wait a minute! Running. Wait a minute! You said his name. You said his name. I know. I you're right. I can. That's that's the uh, he who must not be named in Jaguars <laughs> lore. I'm sure, but um, trust me, I think I hate that man more worse than you do, uh, just because of uh, the unfortunate London trip last year. But uh, yeah, I mean Trevor's balling. You get you guys are uh, in good hands as long as he keeps uh, keeps things going the way he is now. So if Urban Meyer and Nick Saban ran into you, who would you who would you get into a call with? Oh man, I'd call an Uber, Dylan. I, I don't know if I can answer that one. <laughs> they could they could have each other. Urban Meyer, man. I mean, he did some great things with the Gators. I grew up a big Gator fan, so I, I think I'd have to if I had to pick between the two, I'd have to pick him. I mean, mm-hmm. Nick Saban. I the the, the just the history there with the dolphins and, and the absolute lie that he gave to Miami dolphins fans and media saying he wasn't going to Alabama and then taking the job the very next week and then going to Alabama and just completely and utterly dominating college football is I can't, I can't get on board the urban, I'm sorry, the Nick Staven train. Uh, but we, I, you know, Dylan, I got, you got to shoot, shoot, sh- Blah, blah, blah. You got to scoot your camera down a little bit because I see a certain T-shirt uh, that you might be wearing. And I, I think that might be Snoopy. Is that Snoopy, Dylan? Yes, it is, Alex. I bring that up for a specific reason. I heard that there might be a virtual Snoopy 5K that one person in this podcast, who I will tell you is not me, uh, it will be participating in this Christmas time. And uh, I want to hear you talk a little bit about that. Uh, the kind of, you know, obviously a virtual 5K is, is something that I'm I'm not very familiar with and I'd like to learn more about and just kind of hear, uh, hear what you have going on. Well, you know me, you know, I've competed in 29 5K races all in live, but none virtually. And obviously from my shirt, you know, how much we, how much I love the Peanuts characters. I mean, I've watched all the Snoopies. I mean, by the way, it's it pissed me off that you have that you have to watch Snoopy on what Apple TV. Like everything's on Apple TV, Amazon Prime. I'm like, why can't it be on CBS, ABC, NBC, like it did for fifty-seven years? It's ridiculous. Or watch it on YouTube, but not but. You know, I've I've wa- I wanted to try something because I wanted to. I love running, and you know, this time of year it's cool. It's not eight million degrees. I mean, you know, it's going to be freezing this weekend. But I wanted to run a race that be different, and I think running a virtual Snoopy five K is going to be fun. It'll be unique, and it will be. Odd because I'm not going somewhere. I'm just doing here in my neighborhood here in this Bella Terra. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, that's definitely something. Obviously, I know, and, and but I, I do, but I do get a, but I, I do get a medal. Really? Is it a virtual medal? 
No, it's a it's a real man. Oh, there you go. Well, that's good. Uh, you know, I as 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 are you, and I'm sure so many people. Uh, I've always been a big fan of the peanuts, and it, it is ridiculous. I mean, it's we've come to an age where where if you don't have you know, everyone, we, they started adding these streaming services claiming that, uh, why are you paying for cable? You could be paying for this. And now all of a sudden you gotta have, you gotta have Netflix. You gotta have Hulu. You have gotta have Amazon prime. You gotta have Apple TV. You gotta have, you know, all yeah. of these different, it's, it's more, you, you add all of these things up paramount plus if you want to watch champions league. I mean, it's, 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 you add all of these things up and you're paying a lot more for these streaming services than you ever were for cable. So it's, it's definitely frustrating. I mean, I, me and my family have always watched the 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 peanut specials, whether it's the Thanksgiving one, whether it's the thing, uh, the Halloween one, or the, or of course the Christmas special. Um, so you, you know, we're 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 getting to an age and a time where it almost seems like we're we're doing too much. But um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure your family, my family, will definitely be one way or another, whether it's YouTube or some streaming service, finding a way to get that on our TVs this year. After football, of course. All right, Alex. Uh, this Christmas Eve, we've got the 50th anniversary of one of football's most memorable, iconic plays, the Immaculate Reception. Or if you're a Raider fan, maybe the Immaculate Deception. Yeah, you know, it's there, there's, there's moments in NFL history that really – when you see it, you know it's going to be something that's going to be played on TVs for years and years and years and years to come. Um, obviously, you know the Immaculate Reception fifty years ago. I think it's one of the uh, one of the more OG, one of the more uh, you know original classic plays in NFL in NFL history. And um, you know it's it's it'll be nice, uh, especially for Steelers fans, of course, to be to be able to celebrate that. But NFL fans as a whole, I mean, you know it's we get so caught up in, in rivalries and, and wins and losses. And at the end of the day, I mean, football is an amazing game. It's a game that brings so many people together. It's a game that you could have, you could know not a single thing about a guy who you see at the grocery store, but he's wearing a t-shirt of the same football team that you like, and you can have a conversation with him. It's something that brings people together. It's something that, you know, you can hug a stranger after, after a, a crazy fourth quarter comeback. It's, it's, it's something beautiful. It's something amazing. It's something that not everyone understands, but those who do really get it. And, um, you know, the Immaculate Reception is definitely something that's going to be exciting uh, to honor uh, as, as like I said, one of the most, you know, time, uh, time eluding plays that, that have happened and, and something that's really formed, formed the game of football that we love. So I'm excited to celebrate it. I'm excited to, uh, you know, we got, we have football, uh, on Christmas, we've got Christmas Eve football. You know, it, it, it's really a, a unique year and a, a unique season that we'll be really able to, uh, you know, embrace it. So it's, it's something I'm definitely excited for. I think it's – I wonder if they can get – to if uh, the NFL then we can get Terry Bradshaw and Franco Harris in that booth because that would be something. Absolutely. If Franco relive that, that play. Yeah, you know, it that that's something that I I think you know, if 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 they're not at the stadium, uh when does when does Pittsburgh play? They play the late game. The the late game that night. You're right. Um, you know, I mean prime time, you've got Saturday night football, Saturday night football 8:15. I mean, you got to have them on the field for like the halftime show or something like that because, you know, it's uh like you I mean, like we like we've been saying it's it's a momentous uh occasion and uh and moment in, in the NFL that uh you know I'm sure especially Steelers fans but I think all all football fans except for maybe the Raiders can uh, can appreciate. By the way, what team beat the Steelers the next week in, in the uh, AFC Championship that year? Uh so 50 years ago that would have been 70 oh well you know, of course, uh, the one and only pop Perfectville Population One, Miami Dolphins. But uh, let's move on. Uh, next, next uh, Christmas segment we have this week is the naughty or nice segment. Dylan, I want you to tell me who you got on on the naughty list, who you got on the nice list, or one of each, one of both, two of each. You know, it's we make the rules here. 
All right, Alex, you pick for you pick first. Should I start naughty? Should I start on the good list or the bad list? Um, I think you should start on the bad list. Okay, uh, bad. Let me see. Bad. Uh, Russell Wilson for one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, Matthew Stafford. For sure. Uh. Maybe Carlson Wentz. It's a good one. Let me see if I can. I mean, hmm, I think. Uh, oh, Kyler. Say again. Kyler. Kyler Murray. Baker. Baker. I think Mac Jer Mac Jones deserves to be on there. Oh, and uh, uh, okay, then uh, John Taylor. Jonathan Taylor's a good one. Uh, Javante Williams. That's an injury. It's a little, I, I don't know if that one's necessarily fair, but and I'll give it to you. I mean, JT got hurt too. Yeah, but he wasn't doing, I mean, he was not even close to uh, his expectations before that. Uh, let me think if I can. I'll say Trevor Ariza definitely deserves to be on the naughty list. Um, maybe DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift, uh, that's a good one. How about Allen Robinson? Oh gosh. Okay, for okay for that matter, if you're going to start one, uh, DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Especially, I mean, you better keep your helmet on, bud. Oh, yeah, you remember that play against the Falcons, right? Speaking of Falcons, Kyle Pitts. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Kyle Pitts should be near the top of that list, I think. Oh, gosh. How about Jacoby Myers for what happened last week? Yeah, uh, J Mac Jones has given Jacoby Myers a bag of coal for Christmas, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> he will not be um, Jacoby. Yeah, Mac Jones. Yeah, Jacoby Myers might need might need to take out his whole, <laughs> yeah. a whole team after that. I think you could almost put. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, either one of them. I mean, yeah, Tom Brady. Yeah, Tom Brady would be a good one with, especially with how bad that second half was last week. Mm -hmm. So gosh. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's get a little nicer. How about the how about the nice list? Where are we going there? All right. Uh, J uh Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is number one for sure. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is up there. Tyree Kill. I mean, he's having a record breaking season, and I'm not just being biased. He's having a record breaking season. Uh, that Mahomes guy. That Mahomes guy. Okay, that Allen guy. That Allen guy. How about that Jefferson guy? Which one? Mr. Justin Jefferson. Okay. How about Trevor? Trevor, yeah. If you say Trevor, I say two. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, who actually has stayed healthy. McCaffrey's a good one. I was going to use that one myself. Uh, I'll, I'll go from McCaffrey to Tony Pollard. Hmm, nice one. Uh, let me see if I can think. Uh, Josh Jacobs, cool. Uh, Saquon. <laughs> All the hurt ones staying healthy this year. I know, right? It's, it's crazy year in the NFL. Well, Mon, I know. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson. There's a good one. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a double up. Uh, give me two players. Well, actually, not two players. Two people. Dan Campbell. And a Monroe St. Brown. Hell yeah. There you go. You can even throw uh, Jamal Williams in that one. If you want to just bundle them all together. <laughs> yeah, you could because Jamal Williams is taking about 95 touchdowns this year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think wide receiver. Uh, AJ Brown. AJ Brown. You mentioned Cheetah. Yeah, for sure. AJ, AJ Brown, absolutely. Stefan Diggs. Yeah, that that guy's okay. That guy's pretty good. I'm trying to <laughs> now you've got me thinking. Yeah. Travis Kelsey. Of course. 
greatest tight end in the league for sure. Um, he's probably a little bit down the list, but I think he deserves a show. Christian Watson. Oh, especially what he's done the last few weeks. I mean, gosh. Uh, Nick Bosa. Yeah. I'll even give you Justin Herbert. <laughs> Unfortunately, I hate to do it, but hey, we went. Hey, all teams from one one against him. Yeah, only one of the only. Yeah, your team. Yeah, and my team beat him thirty eight. That I think beat him like thirty. Uh, a lot. They're not so much. And a lot. They're not so much. Ten. You're right about that. Uh, Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler's good. I'm putting Mike McDaniel on there. Okay, if okay, okay, you started it. I'll put uh, I'll put the uh, giant coach uh, Brian ah, Dayball. Dayball. That was gonna be my next one. Uh, well, now we're going coaches. Now I'm gonna be Andy Reid. You gotta give it to Andy Reid. Um, I was going to say the Eagles coach, but I can't remember his name. Scalar. I don't remember. (laughs) All right, Alex. All right, Alex. Uh, We're just naming good. It can be for the Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday games. But do you have a bold prediction for the Christmas holiday feast of games? A bold prediction, huh? Ooh, you caught me. You caught me a little off guard on that one. A bold prediction. I'm gonna say. Um, that's not very bold. Let's go with. I got a good one for you. If it's the same one, I'm thinking I'm going trouble. It might be. I mean, this is very bold, Dylan. This is very bold. But give me the Houston Texans beating the Tennessee Titans on Christmas Eve. A 1-12 and 1 team beating a 7 and 7 team. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you know do you know how many y'all do you know Derrick Henry has sadly what four straight 200 yard games against the Texans? I mean it it would be just as surprising for him to do five as it would be for him not to. I think. I mean, that's such a that's such a ridiculous stat that it. I didn't think he was going to get four because it's just how could he? So I'm I'm betting I'm betting the under here and and giving the Houston Texans some sort of credit because they don't deserve it. But for a bold prediction, I mean, I went bold and uh, I think the te- you you know it's been such a crazy year. You never know. I mean, Houston's played really well the last couple of weeks. Pop yeah. led Dallas for a good chunk that game, and Kansas City, beating Kansas City. Kansas City needed overtime to win on Sunday. Yeah. Plus, the Titans, I mean, Lord knows what the Titans are going to look like. Maybe Cannon doesn't even play. Yeah. And, I mean, when they put Malik Willis in, they don't let him throw the ball, so. So what, Derrick Henry could run in and throw it. I mean, honestly, you could probably give every play to Derrick Henry, and realistically, the Titans could still win that game. You could probably throw zero passes and still win that football game. But you know, how, I mean, many, how many throws did Malik Willis have in that, in that one game against? I don't know if it was the Texans or the Colts. I think it was six. I think he had. I think he had. I I can't remember. It's it was less than twelve. I know that. All right. Uh, What's your bold prediction? You're going to love me for this one, homie. I think the Miami Dolphins not only beat the Green Bay Packers, but will beat them by at least a touchdown, if not double digits. I don't even think that's bold, Dylan. I think that's expected. I'll I'll tell you why. Miami played – Miami, I think, has got a – my first off, your Dolphins are back at home after an 0 3 road trip. Secondly, I think the Dolphins have got a superior, have got a better coach, Mike McDaniel, over Matt LaFleur. We may pack our fans are gonna kill me for that. Secondly, your Dolphins are coming off extra rest. Miami played Saturday night, Green Bay played late Monday night. 
And yes, the Pack was on a two-game win streak, but they've played the Bears coming off with seven straight losses and the Rams with Baker Mayfield and a putrid offensive line. Wait, what did I say? Putrid? You said putrid. Putrid offensive line and no weapons. Now, and look who Miami's played the last three weeks. Sam Francisco, the most physical team in the league. Justin Herbert, a top five quarterback in the league. Oh, but yeah, and Josh good. Allen in a blizzard. We should have won... I and mean, we should have won that game, but uh, we we don't have enough time in this in this podcast for me to talk about that. But you know, I mean, I, I appreciate the love. I think I I like I said. I mean, I honestly, I think it's I think it's expected for Miami to win this this week. Um, you know, I think bigger than Green Bay coming off a two game winning streak. I think it's bigger that Miami's coming off a three game losing streak. I don't see them losing four in a row at all, especially with how hard they fought the Buffalo Bills this last week. If if, I mean, if they play, if they play as hard as they played against Buffalo for the last couple games of the season, they'll win out. And um, you know, it's uh, I, I I appreciate the love there, and uh, I hope you're right. Hopefully, it's a two touchdown game at least, because uh, I don't want to be nervous about this one. I want to enjoy my Christmas. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you have a commanding lead, and uh, you know, it's it's a nice little present for me on Christmas. Hey, I mean, I, hey, my dad's birthday's on Saturday, on Thursday, so I'll be, so I'll have a stress-free Sunday watching, not having to stress my team, but hopefully, but hopefully um, we'll get our business done and then root, root like you know what for the Texans. There you go. I do have to say, um, we are in the Christmas spirit. Uh, we are not having a rant today, but... My cousin, a loyal and faithful uh, supporter of the uh, Spunky Spectrum Network and the Big D podcast, told me that he was expecting, uh, he is a Patriots fan, he was expecting some Patriots slander on this episode. Um, If we ranted, he would have gotten it, but Dave, I'm saving you. Um, No Mac Jones slander, even though him and the Patriots deserve it so much for one of the most embarrassing unforgettable and ridiculous losses in an NFL game in NFL history. That's all I'm going to give you. Uh, you get it off easy, but um, you know, Merry Christmas, uh, no rant. We're, we're in too much of a Christmas spirit for that this week, but uh, I just had to give him a shout out and uh, you know, get a look, get, get a quick little cut in, but uh, definitely a lot easier than he got off a lot easier than it could. Have. Yeah, it makes Miami Miracles seem like it, it seem like an ordinary event, right? Yeah. Honestly, but uh, I think that's uh, I think that's about a wrap, huh, Dylan? Yep. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Merry Christmas. Um, you know this. Uh, I'm sure this will be coming out before Christmas, but enjoy your uh, week uh, of uh, cheer, family, Christmas spirit, a little bit of football, which is always nice to have as well. And uh, Merry Christmas from us to you. Yeah, and happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Alex. And uh, go Jags. <laughs> A Christmas Day fins up, baby. <laughs>